you very much. Well, the president made new this week uh, before the whole dust up with his attorney general. That one one's weird. Just pick up the phone and tell the guy what you think. But whatever. Well, that's fine. Uh, the, the fact of the matter is the president really generated a lot of interest in talking about the bull market and that it could all come crashing down if the Democrats go after him. Take a look. I'll tell you what, if I ever got impeached, I think the market would crash. I think everybody would be very poor because without this thinking, uh, you would see you would see numbers that you wouldn't believe in reverse. I don't know. That was a Tony Soprano moment there. <laughs> for me. It was like, I'm not saying I want this bull market to go away, but it would be a pity if it went away. If, I don't know. Uh, it just kind of struck me as interesting. A lot of people we talked to on the street kind of had the same feeling, but did link the president to the success of this market. So we'll pull him out of there. Maybe it goes away. Take a look. I think if Trump gets impeached, which I don't see by which grounds he would be, um, the economy would definitely be affected in a negative way. I don't think it's really dependent on him, okay. to be honest. I think it would definitely affect it. He's been doing so much to create more jobs here. The president doesn't have that big of an impact on the economy. It kind of goes where it goes. He's had a very positive effect on the economy. So if he was impeached, I definitely think it would be, have a negative effect on our economy. Then again, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but it could happen. Uh, all right, so you might have fun with that. I throw that out to you on free basic cable. All right, let's get the read from uh, Don Layfield. We got Susan Lee with us, Melissa Armo, and Jessica Tarlov. Jessica, what do you think of that? Uh, go after me. Kiss this market goodbye. It was one of, I guess, the more interesting things that he said in that interview, but there were a lot of humdingers in there, including, like, you know, we should outlaw flipping and lying about the timeline of everything. I think that he has, and looking at the latest polling, you know, good cause to say that the economy is doing exceptionally well under me. People are reacting to it. The Fox News poll, for instance, the only issue area that he has a positive rating on is the economy. Even though That's a big one to have it, a positive rating it on, It is John. the number I mean, one issue I mean, tied it, with health care. He can take a bow for that, and all would it be imperiled uh, if he were, you know, uh, uh, under an impeachment? He does deserve a lot of credit, but no, it would not be imperiled. And what does this say about Mike Pence? Uh, the fact that if the president's gone, the vice president that he put in power, the world's going to hell under Mike Pence's leadership? That's essentially what he's saying. Look, uh, most of his pro-growth policies have already been put in place, and they have affected the economy. So if, if something were to happen to President Trump, and I don't believe that's in the realm of realistic probabilities, but if something were to happen to him, I don't think he'd have a far departure. It's not like uh, the old days of the presidencies when you had, like, say, McKinley brings in Teddy Roosevelt because he wanted to silence the other side, and you have a radical departure with the vice president. In the modern presidency, you bring in vice presidents that would basically carry on the president's agenda. So very little will change. It would just be Trump without the tweets. Yeah, I, re but I, would I say, remember covering the McKinley point. switch there. <laughs> to John's ahead. point, I, I, Trump, though, has this certain thing that's like a je ne sais quoi, where he can get people to do things. These are Trump administration policies. So yes, if Vice President Pence came in, you'd still have these policies, but could he get the, everything done? I mean, tax cuts is not a new concept. And Trump got it done. And also, he won the election. There were Republicans before him that just couldn't get it done. So he's got that special thing. And I think without him, the market would well, fall. He, he had full run of the table, too. I mean, I'm not minimizing yeah. it. It was a big thing. But, let, Susan, to that point, do you or now are you hearing from people that just the uncertainty of where this investigation goes is going to weigh on We've stocks? We've been here before. We've seen this picture before, 1990s. Clinton, the Clinton boom was the strongest rally that we've seen in American history, right? Stocks went up 470 during That's that nice. run. That's even more than what we've seen. And we just crossed the longest bull market run this week. Now, this one, this we're week. up about, what, 3 to 20? 322, yeah. something like that. So we, that's the bullish argument. That of is a bullish argument. And I think there's a big signal that the markets still have more to run on Friday. We finally broke through a record high for the S&P 500, a closing high that we haven't seen in seven months. That's the longest drought in two years. Do you guys think, though, just the uncertainty of it? Normally, as you remind me, John Wall Street's a bore that, 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 that uh, not knowing where this goes, wondering about these immunity deals, who Who's getting what and why that it, it, it festers beneath the surface. A lot of people dismissed the Watergate thing early on until they couldn't. I, th I think it does fester. I think it's bad for the country. As far as the market, though, you have two presidential impeachments. You had a presidential resignation. You had Iran-Contra, which is more, uh, I think, uh, comparable to this. None of those have had long-term effects on the market. So I don't think this affects the market long-term. I do think it's bad for the country. And I think it does hurt the Republicans in the midterms. But as far as the economy and the market, the, the valuations are coming down. Uh, earnings are up 20-something percent this quarter. This right. bull market is uh, revitalized because of these tax cuts and cut of regulation. But, Jessica, one of the things that come up is that Democrats 
Democrats are potentially grabbing the feet from the jaws of victory by pounding impeachment so much or hinting at it. Well, actually, in the past few weeks, you've seen a big effort by Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, and Jerry Nadler, who would essentially be in charge of impeachment proceedings if we do take back the House in November. Come on, Dems. Uh, all coming out and saying that they will... They will not go the impeachment route. They understand how polarizing this is. And well, right they now, say that. They, they say do, that. Yeah, they do say that. But actually, I certainly believe that Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer mean it. Jerry Nadler. You mean it? They took it out. I, I could still see them pursuing but it. When you look at the enthusiasm gap, Democrats have a huge advantage now. And the latest polling, we even have an advantage. 19 I don't know. We keep getting with, numbers like this market and this economy. But, those enthusiasm numbers go the other way. Well, the economy's been doing side. well for a while, but I would add to that that a thing that will get the GOP base to the polls is impeachment, which is why you hear every Republican out on the trail saying, if you don't vote for us, if you don't show up, Donald Trump is going to be impeached. But didn't that backfire and, on the Republicans? I'm sorry, didn't that didn't, didn't backfire on the Republicans in 98? I mean, it, it, they almost sunk the Republicans. They got killed right after that in the, in the election because they impeached the president. Well, they oh, no, I'm saying zealous. it's something... Right. right. It is a motivating factor. If you look at Trump's base, which is about 25, 30 percent there, and it's a midterm election, which is usually not as exciting as a presidential, obviously, if you want to get them to turn out to at least match the baseline enthusiasm of the, quote, resistance by saying Donald Trump is going to go away. And these are people who, yes, they like Mike Pence, but they do like Donald well, Trump. Well, but even right? Repo I'm him. telling you, even Republicans, Melissa, I want you to react to this. I was talking to California Congressman Rob Barker, a big fan of the president, uh, close friends <laughs> with Vladimir Putin, who was saying, by the way, that the president is getting burned here, although I pointed out to him it's not the fake news media that created some of these crises for him. Let's take a look. The president's being blackmailed. This man uh, was being blackmailed. And the, the president, the guy who's mistakenly handling it so that every bit of the procedure isn't correct, he's not the villain. The villain is the person blackmailing him. But no, we don't get that at all. But Congressman, if someone's trying to blackmail you and you wrote the check to make it go away, you're at least a co-participant in the blackmail, right? Oh, well, no. No, the person who is, who's, yeah, legally, but what we're talking about is, is this massive PR campaign it's against the president. It's not a PR campaign. You're, so you're, you're being cannot... blackmailed and you write a check to someone well, to get well, the, blackmail the blackmail away. You are participating the black... in the blackmail. All right. I, I got mm -hmm. lost sight of where this whole yeah, interview was one. going. But my point <laughs> in there it was, is that, you know, obviously Republicans don't argue the president's a victim. We're, he's, being, he's being targeted and all of that. But, again, he wrote those checks. Uh, to, to, to silence these women. It, it, it is what it is, and it might not be an impeachable offense or a high crime misdemeanor. I'm not saying that, but he is not without galvanizing this talk. And that, I would imagine, worries the markets or could. Well, you're right about your blackmail points, but the thing is, for what he paid them, it's like a poop, it's like a drop in the bucket. It's like, oh, psh, whatever. Well, there can be very small it's campaign finance violations. Money. The law doesn't care how much money well, we it don't know. is. There's, there's a difference on the yeah. law, but you're saying, you know, it, 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 the idea that it could buy the election or the, the way it's been presented. No, no. So you're not worried about, I mean, just looking through the prism of your greedy money eyes, right? I mean, <laughs> by the way, which I admire, Wall Street just sees green. You don't see that having an impact. No, I don't. And here's the thing. Again, we've gone, we've strayed so far from what the original purpose of this investigation was that I think regular people now are more than ever convinced that it is a witch hunt, but that it is trying to go after Trump. What they should, what, the polls what, say honestly, honestly, exactly though. the opposite. The support for the Mueller probe went up okay. 11 points in the last. Well, maybe month. the polls are right. Maybe As the polls the poll are wrong. The polls said Americans Hillary. want it wrapped up like yesterday. Yeah, You're getting you impatient. That one right? wasn't out this week. Well, was it was out the week before. Come well, on. I, 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 I'm I, I, in the present. Yeah. And all I'm saying on this is either it, 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 this would not be the first in, in investigation. We're going to raise this to Robert right. Ray as well. That is veered off course. But I don't know how far off course. And I don't know how the markets can deal with something that could be right. going on now for many months. So some analysis has pointed to some political influence, obviously, on the markets. Markets history has taught us that when there's a democratically controlled House, a Republican controlled Senate and a White House president that's Republican, markets have underperformed during that period. Mm. And you hire this Better Call Saul attorney. You, 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 this is to be, to me, is be expected. You have a real estate guy in New York City, the president. You have all these uh, associations with lawyers. You've got to expect this stuff is going to come out. And I believe that uh, the American public does. I don't believe the American public cares. If it's a crime, yes, uh, prosecute it. But I don't think that's going to affect the presidency but the American public or the cares economy. If they can pay their bills and if they have money in the retirement account, and if you bought the day after the election, if you bought any of the market ETFs, if you bought the market at all, and most strong stocks, you 
you were up more than 30%. If you bought one share that cost $215 of a SPY ETF, you made 72 bucks. You couldn't make that money in anything, all but right. barely in all. But why? That's what people care about. I wish we had more time. Unfortunately, oh. we don't. I think what you're saying is make money, not constitutional law, <laughs> baby. All right, so we'll see where all of this goes. In the meantime, you ever wonder where this probe is going? I think, I think it started out with collusion. What if it's not about collusion anymore? It's just business deals. It, 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 it's not personal. It's all business. After this.